Horses first wore leather and metal shoes around 500 AD to protect their hooves from wear and tear. Today, depending on the animal's vocation, horseshoes are usually made of steel, aluminum, or plastic. A farrier is someone who makes the horseshoes and carefully applies them. A horse's hoof has a hard outer wall like a fingernail, only much thicker. The farrier attaches the horseshoe to this wall with heat and lead nails. The horse feels no pain because the nails don't reach the sensitive tissues inside. Horses get new shoes about every five weeks. After removing the old ones, the farrier uses a file to trim the wall's growth since the last change, about a third of an inch. He measures the hoof's contour, marks the measurement on a steel bar, and cuts it to size with a rotary saw. Steel is the material of choice because it's affordable and durable. Next, he heats the bar until the middle's white hot. He brushes off any dirt, then dips the bar in water to cool it. Then he hammers the ends to redistribute the metal toward the middle. This widens and thickens the part of the horseshoe that gets the most wear, since the front of the hoof hits the ground first and hardest. After reheating the bar, he hammers it again, this time with no cool down. For larger shoes, two farriers take turns hammering so that it goes faster, and they can shape the steel while it's still hot and pliable. Using a drafting compass, the farrier gauges where two grooves for nails will go. He reheats the bar, then holds a sharp-ended tool against it, while another farrier drives it in with a hammer. The nails won't protrude when they're embedded in the grooves. These areas will also fill with dirt to give the horse traction. The farriers round the sharp edges of the horseshoe so the animal won't cut itself when it's lying down. They make the nail holes by first driving this tool into the grooves. Then they use another tool to perforate the steel, hammering it into the shoe over an opening in the anvil that lets the tool pierce through. The farrier then repeats these steps on the other side. It takes two farriers about 15 minutes to make a pair of horseshoes. The first farrier heats one shoe while the second hammers the other. Like the hooves, the front and back shoes are differently shaped. The front pair are rounder, the back ones more oval. Because the horse's hind hooves have evolved to dig into the ground for traction. The farriers also hammer part of both curves, flattening the edges into raised sides called clips. These help the shoe fit onto the hoof. For larger workhorses like Clydesdales, the farriers bend the ends downward to give the feet more traction. It's not uncommon for a 2,000 pound horse to have to pull twice its weight. Now, time for the fitting. After heating the shoe, but not as much this time, the farrier uses it to melt the outer part of the wall. This makes an imprint on the horseshoe that later helps him place it properly on the hoof. Horses first wear shoes at about three years old, the age when they start working or competing. The farrier fine-tunes the fitting with a metal filing tool, curving the edges further to make them even safer for the horse. Next, he shines the steel with a metal brush. The shine will quickly fade once the horse takes its first steps. Depending on the foot size, the finished shoe can measure anywhere from 2.5 to 9 inches across. Now to attach the shoe. The farrier first files the hoof to remove any dust or sharp edges. He slips on the shoe, then gently hammers as many as three nails into each side. The nails are about two inches long. They're made of lead, a metal that's easy to bend and that's what he'll do after hammering them through the wall. He clips off the ends and bends the rest in towards the wall. Then he uses other tools to gouge small crevices in which to bury the ends. This makes it easy to straighten out the nails and yank off the shoe when it's time. He also hammers the hoof against a template to stabilize the shoe. Next, he files the hoof so that it meets the angle of the shoe. And finally, the horse is ready to stroll. So whether you've got a pony or a stallion, make sure the shoe fits. When it comes to horse footwear, function, not fashion, dictates.